Hey, it's Mike. Thanks for tuning back in. Today's Friday, which means Attic Find Friday. It's an awesome day, and I'm stepping outside of my comfort zone today talking about football cards, and I am not a football card collector. I don't know a ton about the history of football, especially the pre-NFL football history, but I'm going to get into um, the holy grail of football cards, which uh, is a pretty interesting story, I thought. First of all, a little housekeeping there is no whatnot sale this weekend, way too busy. Uh, and tomorrow, Hobby Palooza, I am hosting a show with Chris Sewell, baseball card collector, investor dealer, in that order, 3 p.m. Eastern, Saturday. So make sure you're tuned into that. It will be live, and Chris will be at the Chantilly show while I'm sitting here in my basement. So, first of all, uh, Iron Guard Supplies sponsors Attic Fine Friday. Iron Guard Supplies, you can get all of your card supplies, baseball card, football card basketball card, hockey card, whatever cards, supplies at Iron Guard Supplies. Uh, you can enter in Junk Wax 20 for a 20% discount on their website. All right, so today's Attic Find Friday story comes to us from 2012, a Michigan family. And for some reason, a lot of these stories happen in Michigan. Why is that? A Michigan family was cleaning out an old farmhouse after the death of a family member, and they discovered a box of cards the cards were football and boxing cards from the 1890s. There was apparently a very early super collector in their family that was alive in the 19th century and uh, had this box of cards. The cards, some of the cards, were from the rarest football set in existence. Uh, it was the first set dedicated to football players exclusively. It focused entirely on 35 Ivy League football players. And of course, there were no pro football leagues at the time. Football was only, I don't know, 25 or 30 years old in 1894 when this set came out. Harvard, Princeton, and Yale, this is weird to think of, were the most dominant football schools in the country at the time. So these cards, the 1894 Mayo Cut Plug, careful when you say cut plug, tobacco cards uh, were created by Mayo Tobacco Works of Richmond, Virginia, and distributed in tins of P.H. Mayo chewing tobacco. And the family that found these found them in that box in an old notebook that had been there for decades and decades, maybe more than a century. The John Dunlop card from this set is considered to be the Hannes Wagner T206 of the football card world. Now, wildly different values, and we'll get to the values of this card here in a moment, but that's just because of fame. This, this card is more rare, but it's nowhere near as famous, nowhere near as well-known uh, as the Hannes Wagner card. Jefferson Burdick designated this as the N302. So Dunlop was found in this collection, John Dunlop. He was a four-year letterman for Harvard. He also went on to become their backfield coach at one point. He was uh, head coach of Boston College for a few years as well. So he was pretty well known, but for some reason, out of the 35 cards in here, Dunlop is the only one that doesn't have a name or a team, a name or a college on theirs. All of them have their last names on the card and the college they went to, but Dunlop's didn't. That could be why it's the most rare, because nobody knew who he was. It's unclear why it is the most rare, at least unclear to me. And anything I found, I, re I literally read a dozen articles about this, and uh, probably more than that. Um, if you happen to know anything about this that I'm missing, please let me know in comments. I love it when people do that. Mayo was just believed to have lost track of the players in the set and wasn't sure who he was, even though he was pretty famous at the time, although I think this was his freshman year of college, so maybe he wasn't as well known at the time, or yet. Um, in 2012, only 10 of his cards were known to exist, and this is when it was found, remember? Um, and the family found 34 of the 35 in the set. They were only missing the George D card. So this mostly complete set, ungraded and color retouched, sold for $14,000 in REA's spring 2012 uh, auction. And then, so I'm trying to track this card, and I'm pretty sure I've tracked it to an SGC 1.5 later that year. So the person who bought it probably graded it through, graded it through SGC, it graded a 1.5 and sold by itself not long after for $15,000. So the Dunlop, uh, in a set, ungraded, 
sold for 14,000 and the Dunlop alone graded, even though almost the lowest grade you can get, sold for more than that entire ungraded set went for. And then the next year, the complete, almost complete set minus the Dunlop, fully SGC graded, sold for $17,000 in 2013. So the person who bought it, seemingly, uh, added in the Georgia D, maybe. And, uh, and again, it's unclear. It's really difficult to tell. The pictures are small, so it's, you know, you got to kind of... And then they sold the entire set combined between the two auctions, SGC graded, for $32,000. Pretty good investment. Under a year, you've more than doubled your investment. Uh, and, but then, the same set appears to have sold for $14,000 three years later in 2016. So, it's interesting. And, and I know cards weren't really popular between 2012 and 2016. I couldn't find anything on the boxing cards the family found. Interestingly, I mean, the 1890s seems like a popular time for vintage boxing cards if, if we're just going by breakout cards videos. Uh, so this set, what is it about this set? It, uh, it's very condition sensitive. They have black borders that bleed a lot. Very, very difficult to keep nice. Uh, of course, most of the cards at that time were trimmed and or glued into albums by kids. Uh, or maybe stuck to a wall or, or whatever they were doing at that time. There are only 500 graded by PSA in the entire set. There are only seven eights, none graded higher. Only eight graded for John Dunlop, the anonymous card, as it's called. Only two threes with none higher. And I'm I've been trying to find sales for this one specific card. A PSA authentic, recolored, with a crease, sold for $7,300 in 2015. A PSA 3 sold for $8,000 in 2009, so 15 years ago almost. A PSA 1 sold for 12500 in 2013. An SGC Authentic sold for 9500 in 2020. So I'm curious, what do you think? If a PSA 1 sold for 12500 in 2013 and an SGC Authentic sold for 9500 in 2020, what would a PSA 1 or a PSA 3 sell for now? Let me know in comments. Complete set of the 35 with an average grade of about 2 sold for 35,000 in 2010. I don't think that was graded though. I think that was just estimates of what the grades would be. I couldn't find any details on that one. In this set, six of the 35 players went on to go into the College Football Hall of Fame. Um, a man named Nielsen Poe of Princeton was also in the set. Nielsen Poe is the younger brother of All-American quarterback Edgar Allan Poe. But not that Edgar Allan Poe. The writer Edgar Allan Poe is Nielsen Poe's second cousin. Weird, just a fun little fact about this set. George D. of Yale was inducted into the International Tennis Hall of Fame. He was also the president of the United States Tennis Association. So really neat stuff, I think. Um, in 2002, Donruss paid tribute to this set with their Donruss 1894 set that was inserted into packs of Gridiron Kings. But instead of the cards at the bottom saying, for chewing and smoking, they put for collecting and trading. Much more kid-friendly in the modern days. And instead of blank backs like the ones in 1894 had, these ones were numbered to 1,000. They had card number, they had logos. And then Topps did something similar in 2008 and 2009. It's a really neat set. It's cool history. Uh, I learned a lot. Hope you did too. You can actually find these cards on eBay from the 1894 Mayo Cut Plug set. They're not cheap. These are hundreds of dollars for graded, authenticated cards. Um, yeah, let me know what you think in comments. Hopefully I'll see you at Hobby Palooza tomorrow. Hope you guys have a great weekend.